Hello Simmers, welcome to another video from FS Pro. In today's video I wanted to try and address some questions I've been getting from some of my subscribers. And it's a question I get fairly regularly across the different flight simulators um, that I use. And that's related to my configuration in terms of both my hardware and my software. I guess I do spend quite a bit of time trying to get an optimum balance so that I can achieve uh, good frame rates whilst also maintaining decent visuals. Of course that's affected by a whole number of different things but sometimes uh, subscribers are eager to see what kind of a configuration a YouTuber is using to see whether or not they can emulate that or perhaps get something from that that they can try themselves to see if they can improve their own frame rate or texture resolution. So today um, I thought I'll go ahead and take a look at all my configuration, write it all up and put it into an article on my website at fspro.uk. But then I realised that that was a hell of a lot of work, uh, and predominantly uh, the articles that I create are all based on video. So wouldn't it be better to create a video of this? So here we are. I'm sat in the Piper Cherokee in a small GA parking slot at Innsbruck Airport, Lima, Oscar, Whiskey, India. Let's take a look then at the setup that I'm currently using. So here for the display for graphics, you can see I've got a custom profile. I believe actually the default is you end up with a custom profile because when you start up prepared, it goes through your system and configures it in the way that it thinks would be uh, best given your system setup. Um, what can I say down here that's uh, anything special? I reduced my texture resolution from the ultra down to high uh, to see if that would make a difference to my frame rates. It did at the time that I did it, so I've left it there. I'm not noticing any problems with the resolution of either inside the aircraft or outside the aircraft or indeed the 3D world, so I'm quite happy to leave it here. I have absolutely no clue what tessellation is all about. There's a description here. I enabled it. I have tried changing it a couple of times and uh, noticed that when it's on, it doesn't affect my frame rate, so I've left it on. Despite reading the uh, pop-up tips here for Blackout Desktop and also Fill main, main Menu or Main View, I'm still not sure what they do. Uh, so I've selected the options that you can see here. It works fine for me. I've set my target frame rate 230 because 30 frames per second is the default for an upload to YouTube. So that seems like a good idea. Uh, MIP map VC panels. Can't remember what's that tooltip about. Improves the appearance of the virtual cockpit panels, which for me uh, is certainly, I think, a worthy uh, thing to be after. Wide view aspect ratio. Not too worried about that. And 2D panel transparency. I'm not using 2D panels, so I don't think that that would apply to me. In any case, I've got it set to zero. Scenery. Um, what can I tell you about this stuff? Not a lot. I mean, it kind of all makes sense, really, I, I think. Um, I suppose what's different between my settings here in P3D and FSX is that I feel free to improve the quality of the water detail uh, because P3D behind the scenes is offloading a lot of the graphic work onto the GPU rather than in FSX where it's handled by the CPU and if you try and put too much detail into your water setting it can really harm your frame rates. Not so here in P3D we can get good looking water and no real great effect on the frame rate. Um, yeah, not much I'd say about anything else here. Actually, that looks fine. Lighting, I like HDR lighting. I'm not sure that aircraft necessarily make full use of HDR lighting, but uh, I certainly like the effect when it is being used. 
lens flare, yeah, light, landing lights illuminate the ground, definitely I would want that. Shadow quality, one of the big reasons for me getting P3D in the first place was because the shadows add an extra quality of immersion for me. So I've set that on medium because if you go too far it really does gobble up your frame rates and again I'm always trying to walk that fine line and get the balance right. This seems to work. The quality is certainly acceptable. My frame rates are hardly affected. Um, enable train to receive shadows. Uh, yes, and you can see all the different settings I've put here for how far that applies. Um, internal vehicle and external vehicle, cast and receive. Um, I like seeing shadows inside of the cockpit, so that's why I've set these away that I have. For these things down here, the more you click, the more likely your frame rates will be affected. And for some of them, such as vegetation, I'm not really too fussed about shadows. I may put this on, a, on an as-required basis, so if I'm deliberately doing a video for uh, an aircraft that's flying at low level, maybe something like a helicopter, and I'm filming that either at dawn or dusk when the shadows are long and have a pronounced effect on your feeling for the scene that you are setting, then I might switch those on. In other words, some of these settings I will change on an as-required basis. These ones we're seeing at the moment are my default, but I may well change some for certain videos. Weather. I love the volumetric clouds available in P3D. It was another one of the reasons why I made the jump and spent $199 buying the professional version of P3D because I thought the volumetric clouds added a lot to it. As well as this, incidentally, um, apropos of nothing, I also installed Rex Soft Clouds. That's still usable, even though you've got volumetric clouds here inside of P3D. Traffic, I don't really bother with. The reason for that is because I use Universal Traffic 2. I've managed to get it working with Prepared and that's good enough for me in terms of the aviation traffic. I don't need P3D to be throwing any in for me as well. And the settings that I've got here, they work fine. Simulation general. Um, I hate pause on task switch. I turned it off in FSX. It remains turned off in P3D. Using system time for the default flight just makes things generally a bit easier if I just want to start up and get flying and showing the scenario startup screen. I can't remember if that's the default in FSX. It certainly is not in P3D, um, but I prefer that way so I can make all my selections before I go fly. What else would I talk about here? I'm in the UK, of course, so I have to use a hybrid setting of feet and millibars. Uh, latitude is as you would expect it to be. Nothing much to talk about there. On to the sound. I've left all that at default, haven't found any need to change it yet. I don't use visual flight paths, so no changes made there. Ditto on failures, I haven't used that yet, I've made no changes here at all. For the controls, so I'm running uh, prepared on Windows 8, and Windows 8, as many of us Windows 8 users know, has a problem with sleeping joysticks. Uh, so. As I did in FSX, I'm now doing in Prepared, which is that I deselect the Enable Controllers option here and I configure all of my controllers through FSUI PC, for which I simply got the latest update. It works in P3D as well as it works in FSX. So all the sensitivity settings and everything you see here, uh, absolutely no interest at all as far as my system setup goes, it's the FSUI PC that I use to set up all of this stuff for me. On to the World Realism settings. Um, I don't believe I've changed anything here at all either. You notice I've got everything over here set over to realistic. I do detect crashes. Aircraft stress does uh, cause damage and so on and so forth. In other words, I've got this set to about as realistic as I can get my simulator to be. 
Time of season, I usually default to system time, uh, so no changes needed there. And for weather, I'll often leave it at clear skies, because if I'm producing a video that is, oh, I don't know, like a tutorial for my Airbuses or, or my, an upcoming series that I've got for uh, mirroring the UK PPL syllabus, then flying in clear skies is my default place. That's where I want to be. If I want to use real weather, I tend to use the active sky next weather engine to inject the weather and the settings here wouldn't make any difference anyway. So that's why I leave it on this for a default. So those are my settings that I use for P3D. There is also, of course, the P3D config file. Um, let's have a look. Yes, I'll reload. So it's in the snappily titled See Users, Your Username Here, Update a Roaming, Lockheed Martin, Prepared V2, Prepared 3D.cfg. I do wish they'd find an easier way to locate and name these files. Anywho, everything in here is the default. All I've done is to add those two lines into my CFG file and also this one line into the main section. Now both of these changes I've made come directly from Matt Davis, another YouTuber who fairly regularly posts about tweaks and tips that he has for the different environments within which he flies. So thanks for those Matt. All I've done is copy them, use them, they seem to work great, they had a positive effect on my FPS. The only downside I see is that if you look in a direction which the aircraft is not currently pointing, then you'll definitely see things being redrawn. So I don't know if I can give you an example of what I mean here. Let's take a quick look. So if I look across the right, there we are. You can see those buildings are currently black and now they're being redrawn. Now without those settings I just showed you in my CFG file, they would have been redrawn and if I had looked to the right I would see them as I see them now. Let's see if we can see anything over here. Same problem going on. I'm not looking to the front. These things have not been fully drawn. If I wait a while, there we go, <laughs> as if by magic, they will fill in. So as ever with these things, there's a balance between FPS and the look of the thing. And there is no clear-cut, simple answer. Sometimes you just need to experiment and try stuff. Am I willing to accept this downside of the settings that I have in favour of an improved frame rate? At the moment, yes. Sometimes, though, I'll go and change the config just to see whether or not it's going to have a marked impact on my FPS. As long as I can achieve 30 frames per second on a fairly consistent basis, I'm happy. And I will lower the quality of my graphics and textures so I can achieve that 30 FPS. Okay, what was the other thing I wanted to show you? Oh yes, so this is my current hardware setup. My motherboard is a Gigabyte GA-Z77X-UD5H. Who dreams up these numbers? I don't know. Um, more importantly, perhaps, I'm using an Intel i7. It's only a 3770K CPU uh, at 3.5 gigs. I'm not overclocking it at all. It's absolutely stock. My operating system is Windows 8.1. Occasionally, you'll see me running against Windows 7 as well. I have a, a multi-boot machine, which also uses Mac OS X. So don't be surprised to see me using X-Plane on Mac OS X in some time in the near future as well. In terms of storage, I'm starting to move very heavily now towards SSDs. Uh, I use fairly fast RAM and an awful lot of it, 32 gig of RAM here. Uh, what else could I say about those? Not a lot. I've got a Cytec X52 and Cytec Pro rudder pedals. This latter one here, I really ummed and ahed for a long time about whether or not to buy rudder pedals. In the end, it was the need to do helicopter flying that made me think it was a worthwhile expense. 
it definitely was for me it was a worthwhile expenditure and now I can't imagine flying any of my sims without it albeit I'm still not very good especially when it comes down to taxiing video hardware I've got a 2 gigabyte uh, NVIDIA GeForce 680 um, again it's not the biggest latest smartest all singing all dancing uh, but it's certainly more than good enough for what I'm using it for um, and one subscriber was kind enough to comment uh, that he was using two GE Force GTX um, cards that were uh, slaved together but he couldn't achieve some of the frame rates that uh, I appeared to be able to get inside of the sim so well hopefully if you're watching this video and you've looked at my configuration and setup you'll be able to do something about that recently for video software I moved across to Apple Final Cut Pro from Camtasia Apple Final Cut Pro is a lovely piece of software only downside is that I record everything on my PC then I have to move it across to my Mac mess about with it and upload it to YouTube and then I go back and edit some of that stuff from my Windows uh, machine again so there's a bit of moving around but other than that it's okay NVIDIA Shadow Play I use because it makes heavy use of the GPU as you would expect on an FSX that's absolutely brilliant because FSX only makes use of the CPU however now that I'm in prepared which does make use of the GPU lines are starting to blur and if I do videos on X-Plane which makes extensive use of the GPU then again I've got a balance to get right here between using shadow play to record and the graphic settings that I've got for X-Plane. At the moment I still find it to be the best recording mechanism that I have. I've tried shadow play, I've tried Fraps, I've tried Camtasia but so far shadow play remains the best one. Audio hardware, nothing really to talk about here except I really love my uh, Turtle Beach headsets. I've had a number of different Turtle Beach headsets. I think they're really good. The... Oh, I appear to have crashed. Object collision. I'm not sure what I've crashed into because I appear to have remained stationary. Anyway. Uh, the Turtle Beach uh, headsets, as I say, I really like. Uh, the Rode USB microphone I use if I'm doing some form of narration. Um, okay, and Audacity is what I use for recording all of my audio for my videos as well so that's that I guess let's have a look although and prepared has now crashed if I get a moment I'll see if it comes back up again and we'll take a quick look at what I've got set in FSUI PC um, but other than that that is my configuration and setup so I don't think there's anything Carlos Fandango in there at all. It's it's fairly simple and straightforward. It's just, if anything, a case of getting that balance between the look and the speed, getting that right. Once you've got that, then you know that's the best that you can do. Really, you you, you can't get one without having to make a change in the other. Okay, well. Um, <laughs> prepared it appears to have done a complete reboot so this won't make any difference to what I wanted to talk about though which was my FSUI PC I have done very little in here except I've gone into axis assignment and I have assigned things like my throttle and my joystick and so on and once they've all been done I've gone to the calibration section and I have calibrated all of those controls so here are the ailerons for example and so on and the other thing I've done is I've gone to buttons and switches and made some settings here so for example the throttle cuts which activates reverse thrust on the jets that I fly I've assigned to a particular button on my joystick hardware and so on and so forth so there's nothing special that's going on here NFS UI PC other than the joysticks are calibrated through here the axis assignment is done through here and FS UI PC sends these on to prepared in fact if I can just uh, there we go so look at elevator here for example 
Um, what's this? I'm looking on the wrong. I think I'm looking on the wrong page here. Where am I looking? Or what am I looking for? No, that's not it. Oh, here we are. So this button, for example, select for FS control. What it means is that this button is going to then affect any one of the flight sim controls. And down here, I select the ones I want, whether I want it to repeat. Um, but there's nothing in this configuration that's going to affect the way that P3D flies. I know there's another setting in here somewhere that I select. Oh, here we are. So down here, type of action required. So on the throttle, for example, uh, I say send direct to FS UIPC calibration rather than send to FS as a normal axis or send to the FS UIPC offset. So that's the one thing. It goes to FS UIPC, which then will take it and send it forward to FSX, or in this case, P3D. So everything goes to FSU IPC for my throttle, my elevators, and my ailerons, and some of the other major controls as well. But other than that, nothing special, no clever settings in here that would make any difference to P3D. So that's it, really. That's the entire configuration that I've got set up for Lockheed Martins Prepared. I hope that's been useful. This is very quick and simple, I hope and that will address some of the questions that you may have. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you on our next video.